biggest mistake that people make when going on cruising is going on the wrong cruise line. So this video is designed to help you decide is Windstar the right cruise line for you? Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge. I'm here on board the Windstar Star Breeze. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you a whole bunch of reasons to get you thinking about Windstar and whether it's the right cruise line if you're thinking of going on a cruise. First thing that I thought I'd let you know is that Windstar is not part of one of the big groups. So if you've got a group like Carnival, which control things like Carnival, Cunard, Holland America, Seabourn, Princess, p and they have, they basically control most of the cruise lines. There's another group called Royal Caribbean, which uh, looks after Royal Caribbean. It has Celebrity, it has Azamara. So those are the two big giants in cruising. Windstar is quite an independent group. They only have six ships in their fleet. It's a much more independent group. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit more independent, then that's something to certainly think about rather than one of the big uh, groups of cruise lines. The trend in cruising is to bigger and bigger ships. You know, a lot of the cruise lines have these big monster ships. What Windstar do is have much smaller ships. So their biggest ship only has just over 300 passengers and it goes down to about 140. So it's a small ship experience. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more intimate, and you don't like the idea of going on really big ships, then definitely Windstar may be something to think about. So for example, on the Star Breeze that I'm on, it has a maximum capacity of about 210 guests, I think it's about 212, and 150 crews. So it's quite small and quite personal. So Windstar have two basic types of ships. So there's six ships altogether in the fleet. Three of them are sailing ships, and three of them are sort of engine-driven ships. And all th the three engine-driven ships are old seaborne ships. Again, kind of still yacht style. So it's really a yacht style service that Windstar promise. The other thing, of course, with being a small ship is uh, the crew get to know you very well. Uh, they know what you like, what you don't like. There tend to be no lines. Excursion groups tend to be much smaller in size. So the ships within the fleet are not brand spanking new. So the uh, the sailing ships that they have, the sailing yachts that they have, they're all um, you know maybe 15 years old or maybe even older than that. And the three newer ships are old seaborne ships, so they're also in their late teens. They've obviously been revamped and remodeled and uh, updated, but they are older ships. Although the ships are small, it doesn't mean that there are no choice of facilities, but there won't be as many as on the big, more resort-style ships. So you will have uh, a couple of choices of lounges. So for example, on the Star Breeze that I'm on, you've got the Yacht Club, you've got uh, Compass Rose, you've got the, the lounge where Port Talks are, you've got the Star Bar outside, it's a very small casino. So there is less choice of amenities, obviously, because the ships are smaller, so there's not as much uh, onboard activity. So if you're looking for lots of onboard activities, lots of activities, lots of events, lots of entertainment, lots of quizzes, lots of production shows, guest artists, big casinos, uh, rock climbing walls, all those kind of things that are much more linked to resort style ships, then Windstar is not going to be the right cruise line for you. However, if, you, if you're quite happy to have a much uh, quieter, uh, less uh, laid on entertainment, and you're quite happy just to chat and meet people and really focus on the destinations, uh, which is a different time of experience, then Windstar is probably going to be much more suited to, to you and your way of traveling. One of the features that Windstar ships have, which is a real plus, and the big cruise uh, ships don't have, is the water sports platform. So at the back of the ship, when the ship is um, docked in a harbor, and of course the sea conditions are suitable and the water's warm enough, they can open the water sports platform at the back of the ship. And that's a great experience because you can then basically go kayaking, you can go on an RIB boat, or you can just swim and splash around and have fun on the various uh, water uh, to toys and things that they put out there. They can only do that when the ship is uh, you know, anchored out in a bay. They can't do it when the ship is actually within a port and dock. The other thing on Windstar is choice of cabin types. So generally speaking, there's four cabin types. There's the owner suites, which there's not very many of them, which are the very big suites. Then you would have classic suites, which, which are also quite big. And then you would tend to have cabins similar to the one that I'm in, which is a balcony suite or the ocean view suites are the same. So all of the suites will have ocean view. You don't have inside cabins. So if you're looking for a cruise line and you want something that's you know really good value and you, you're quite happy to have an inside cabin, then Windstar are not gonna be able to accommodate you. Now, because the ships are smaller, the other thing that they can do is call on slightly more diverse ports because they're smaller, they're more nimble, they can get into smaller ports. 
Also, because they're smaller, often they will dock either right in the heart of town or they're more just outside and t tend to people in. So the next thing to think about is the overall experience on Windstar is much more casual. So some of the cruise lines, you know, which really focus on a much more formal cruising experience. So they might have formal nights, dressing up, you know, tuxedo nights, that kind of thing. Windstar is a much more informal approach. So uh, the crew will often call you by your first name. The dress code is fairly uh, casual. So the, str the strictest dress code is in the evenings where they ask you to be ele elegantly casual. So you can't wear jeans, for example, you can't wear shorts to dinner, but you can wear slacks, you can just wear a polo shirt, something like that. So there's no formal nights, there's no themed nights or anything like that. So if you're looking for a cruise line where you do actually get dressed up, if you like the idea of putting on nice gowns, putting on cocktail dresses, wearing a tuxedo, wearing a jacket and tie, then you'll probably be disappointed with Windstar. Other examples of the line being fairly casual is because it's a smaller ship they are things like they have uh, an open bridge policy so for example uh, other than when you're coming into port or going out of port when pilots are on board and they can't let you onto the bridge you can actually go onto the bridge chat, chat to whoever's on the bridge which obviously on bigger ships you can't do because there's much more people and there's much more kind of structure and formality around it it's a much more relaxed uh, overall experience because they can be because there's much fewer passengers on board the other thing I noticed a lot on Windstar is about the type of passengers. So a lot of the passengers that I've come across and, and spoken to, they are uh, well-traveled, they travel quite a lot, they're mostly um, Americans, Australians, uh, some Brits, not many, but it tends to be much more sort of North America, Australians, a couple of Kiwis, that kind of stuff. They tend to be very well-traveled uh, and travel frequently, and so they're looking for a smaller, more intimate experience. Uh, they're not looking as much to perhaps dress up, they're not looking Looking for it to be as much of a special occasion and they're very much focused on the destinations and pretty much everyone I spoke to the real reason they chosen the Windstar cruise was around the itinerary and the ports of call rather than the ship because the ships being smaller they don't have like some of the bigger resort style ships they don't have lots of facilities and lots of uh, onboard entertainment and attractions and things so therefore the shift in emphasis is much more towards the ports and the destinations the other thing that I think Windstar does really well, and if it's very important to you, is food and dining. So there's a buffet breakfast, there is a buffet lunch, and then in the main dining room, the Amphora restaurant, which is a beautiful uh, restaurant, there is a huge menu every evening with lots of starters, uh, soups, main courses, lots of desserts, so a lot of choice. And every single day, the chef will have a daily special. And because the ships are smaller, they will often have bought either fish in the local market or you know we'd got certain pastas that were bought uh, in the places we were in Italy on my particular cruise so they're able to do that much more the food is great it's very high quality uh, lots of it and a lot of choice one of the things that I've been asked about is is it an all-inclusive cruise experience and the answer is no not really it basically is very similar to other cruise lines. So it has the usual inclusions, obviously your cabin or your food is included. Um, soft drinks are included though. So if you have, you know, Diet Cokes or Cokes or fruit juices or teas and coffees, that's all included. But your usual things are excluded. So excursions are not included, although there is one event included in every cruise, which is a special destination immersion experience, uh, which is included, which might be out going out to um, leads to local families and have uh, you know lunch or tour a farm or something like that so the things that are not included are excursions are not included gratuities are not included Wi-Fi is not included so the usual things that you would expect with many other cruise lines are not included so there you have it there's a whole bunch of things about Windstar which hopefully has helped you decide if Windstar is a cruise line that you should be considering and I do think it's really, really important when you go cruising to make sure you choose the right cruise line. So hopefully that's given you some things to think about, about what Windstar is and what Windstar isn't to help you make up your mind. Now, if you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. I'd also love it if you subscribed to the channel.